Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! You are listening to James O'Brien on LBC, and you are listening to him, in, to me, in a country where if, uh, he, if you were accused of certain types of crime, then before charges had been brought, your name could be put into the public arena. Are you comfortable with that? Is, is the discomfort, the suffering of Cliff Richard over the last well, more than a year, the price we pay for shaking the tree successfully in the cases of people like Stuart Hall? and Rolf Harris. John's in Northwood. John, what would you like to say? Uh, good morning, James. Um, reluctantly, I, I can't agree with you. I'm actually reading uh, Love by Paul Gambaccini, My Year Under the Yew Tree. Yes. I mean, again, he, he's another high-profile case who became a suspect uh, at the end of 2013 uh, and was effectively off the air for more than a year and, and suffered financially. Nigel Evans, MP, um, you've got people who rumours were about who, uh, you know, the whole in inquiry surrounding the likes of Leon Britton. I think, I, I think Nigel Evans ended up in court, didn't he? Nigel Evans ended up in court. So that's not that's not quite the same. Well, no, but um, with a lot of these... It's, 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 the people, it's the people who were investigated and there wasn't found to be enough to prosecute that, that are most interesting to this debate, isn't it? Well, the ones that, that these are the ones that trouble me. The ones that are named and then subsequently uh, the police don't have enough evidence even to bring about a charge. I think at the point of charging them, uh, saying, yes, we, we're convinced we have a case, by all means, put the name in the papers. Um, but if you haven't got enough to charge them, uh, I, I think... Uh, I, I mean, I understand exactly what has happened as a result of the fact that nothing was done about that monster Jimmy Savile for years. Mm. Um, but you've even got the ridiculous situation where the BBC uh, sacked Tony Blackburn a few months ago on the basis of hearsay about a report who... Well, again, again, I mean, you're, you're covering a lot of territory. Um, well, no, uh, but it all, well, the basic point is... No, James, no, no, the, uh, no, hang on, John, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm, I'm just correcting you on a couple yeah, of things. I'm, I'm listening to you. The, the rationale given by the BBC for the way Tony Blackburn was treated was not what you've just described. The, the rationale yeah. they gave was that there was a, 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 a disparity or a disconnect in his account of something that happened decades ago. I mean, I, I, for the record, it strikes me that he was quite shabbily treated, but it wasn't hearsay. It was, it was a, they had a reason. And anyway, we're, we're getting distracted. Here's the deal. Without naming him, I don't think Stuart Hall would have been convicted. It was people who weren't known to each other coming forward that effectively led multiple victims unknown to each other coming forward with very similar stories. Without publicity, Julian Suffolk says he would probably still be free and offending today. So it's a question of what you're most comfortable with. The idea of an abuser carrying on with the abuse because we can't name him publicly until charges are brought or somebody who's innocent suffering in the way that Cliff Richard and Nigel Evans and others that you've mentioned have suffered, Paul Gambaccini, and then subsequently being exonerated. And I, I honestly don't see how, when you put, look at the scales like that, here's an abuser who's going to carry on getting away with it, here's a non-abuser who's going to suffer terribly for a period of time and then be exonerated at the end of it. How can you see the, 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 the former as the lesser of two evils? Uh, I, I understand totally what you're saying, and given all that, I know that you are partly right. Um, but <laughs> this is far too diplomatic. This conversation. <laughs> did the BBC? Did did the York, did the South Yorkshire Police really have to tip? You're off doing it again. You're doing it again. You're going off on a tangent. This is a simple question of principle. Who, who, what is the lesser of two evils? An abuser getting away with it because they couldn't when a couple of accusers came forward they couldn't quite get enough together to proceed with a prosecution or a non-abuser being accused of it publicly and subsequently being exonerated simple question what's the lesser of those two evils i remain troubled you can be as troubled as you want i want to know what the lesser of those two evils is i can't agree with you james <laughs> I've not, I've, 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 so you think you think that a, a false accusation subsequently disproved is worse than an abuser going out and abusing children this afternoon um i will listen with interest to what other people say i all i can say is that well, you are you're answering the question by not answering it john uh, uh, and I, I do find that pretty grim 
that that's as good an answer as you're going to get from me. It yeah, is I'm not surprised. But I think if I if I was of the the abuse that, that, that letting the abusers go free in order to protect men who would subsequently be proven innocent, um, I, I probably wouldn't want to state it explicitly on national radio either. 22 minutes after 11. But John raises valid points, and, and, and it's a powerful position he adopts. I just can't go past, I can't go past that scale. I knew this would happen. If we started talking about it, it would crystallise. So I think that's what this whole conversation is about. Here are some scales. Which is the lesser of two evils? Abuser? accused but not on a sufficient scale to merit prosecution named more come forward prosecution proceeds conviction secured not named carries on with it gets away with it accuser stroke victim absolutely destroyed for the second time and then on the other side you've got your cliff richard your paul gambaccini accused investigated Named, and I think it's fair to say, public temporarily but publicly shamed. That's on the other side. And then exonerated. After heartbreak and hell. Which is the lesser of two evils? The guilty person carrying on and getting away with it? Or the innocent person suffering publicity, reputational damage and one imagines complete heartbreak? I told you it wasn't easy, but I think I know which way you're going to lean. Katie's in Cambridge. Katie, what would you like to say? Hi there, James. Hello, um, I think um, the idea of the scale that you're talking about is a really good one. Um, and just to add a different spin on it, if we could look at it from a sort of more macro yes. perspective with the same idea of the scale right now, I think the situation we have is that um, we're protecting men and we're letting women down. Women are overwhelmingly the victims of rape. Um, and we know that thousands and thousands of women are raped every year and some men um, and we know that the, the conviction rate for sexual violence is much lower than other crimes, it's only 5.7% um, so with that in mind there's thousands of rapists and sexual assaulters going free every year, unconvicted never named um, and I think if we I really sympathise with people like Cliff Richard who um, have been wrongfully accused um, and who have obviously suffered in the in the short term, but I think if we balance up as a society um, who we want who we want to protect and um, what the price of that might be, I think we do have to shift the balance from overwhelmingly protecting men uh, to protecting the thousands of women and girls that we know are raped every year and who never get a conviction. And yet, it's easy for us to say, because it's not us in the firing line, it's not us in the in the public dock, if not the courtroom dock. Absolutely. Um, but I think if we, if we look at it from that sort of universal perspective right now, um, we're saying that these men, the small, the tiny minority of men who are wrongfully accused, their lives are more important than the thousands of women and girls. No, we're lives. not, because, because you, I, 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 don't, I don't, well, are we saying that? We're not saying they're more important, no, we're not. Um, I, I feel I feel like we are. If um, if what we're if we, we're having these big national conversations every single time um, uh, a guy is wrongfully accused, um, it, it's a, it is a tragedy. But for every one of him, there's thousands and thousands of men who never get a conviction and never have to face. No, I, I, I know that. I'm just not comfortable with you saying their lives are more important. I, I, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's two wrongs don't make a right would be my response to that. I don't know that necessarily there's a sort of hierarchy of importance involved in the current legislation. But you're right, of course, to suggest that naming before charges could and demonstrably does secure convictions in, in cases where they might otherwise have proved hard to find. Uh, ah, I, I knew this was going to happen. Every call's going to swing us back one way and then the other. 11.26 is the time. Simon is in Austerley. Simon, what would you like to say? Well, I'm going from the other point of view. I think it is absolutely um, vital that people who are accused of abuse, particularly sex abuse, uh, because there's so much stigma attached, should not have their names put into the public domain until they are at least charged. But I would go one step further until they are found guilty in a court of law. If there are other people then 
who have been abused by this monster, say monster, this uh, this abuser, yes. then that is their opportunity to step forward. But this... Uh, I, it's your, but, but sorry to interrupt, Simon. Do I, do I recognise your voice? Have we met? Are you... Are you, are you, are you, are you... We've met at um, the, um, television. We met on... Um, is it Good Morning Britain or was it used to call Daybreak? Yes, you're... you're, 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 you're the teacher, you, you, you were accused yourself, weren't you? Simon War. Yes, yes. Simon War. That's it. And I was, uh, the people who accused me, the two friends, I'd never met. I knew nothing about. They'd seen me on television, they'd heard me on the radio, and they, because they'd just, um, uh, been awarded £20,000 for accusing somebody else on the same staff, they thought that was quite easy, would we'll pop in again. And well, yeah, I, well, 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 I mean, legally, I don't know the, the, the background to, to, to the other case. And well, it, I know what the background No, is. I'm sure you do, but I, I, I can't let it go out on the radio unless I've checked it, my friend, okay, that's all. Fine. But we can speak about yours. So you, you were accused, uh, subsequently acquitted. You, you ended up in court. Um, I did. Give me an idea of acquitted. what that feels like. I mean, the damage, because you're an innocent man, and yet you speak with the anger still very near the surface, uh, the, the fact that you've been well, acquitted. I said to the police, hmm. I said to the police, are these, are, are they now going to be arrested? Because it wasn't a question of there wasn't enough um, evidence to prove me guilty. The jury came straight back in. They went out and they came straight back in again. It was preposterous. It was obvious uh, this was a concoction. But, but, but then you said, need to deal with that other, because I have nothing but sympathy for you, Simon. What you went through sounds absolutely hellish. Absolutely. No wonder you're still furious. I would be. We all would be. But they're on the other side of these scales, these metaphorical scales that I've, uh, yeah. I've drawn today. I here goes the, the other point. I can name, and you can name people, who probably wouldn't be in prison today if their name hadn't been put into the public sphere before charges were brought, let alone a conviction. I uh, well, I, I, in the, 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 the investigating now. officers in the Stuart Hall case would, would support my observation. Yes, but that, that was 2013. We're now 2016. We, are. we now are leading the way in child abuse investigations. Nobody in this country is under any doubt that if they've been abused in their lifetime, they will be listened to sympathetically. So, the, so the, 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 what the atmosphere that existed before Savile, I agree. The people okay. were frightened to come forward. They were frightened, particularly famous people, that they wouldn't be listened to. Now they know they would be. So there is no point in revealing some of the particularly famous people like Cliff Richard because you must understand James you know they are it's famous people are sitting ducks and it's all very well to say oh well we without Stuart Hall wouldn't have been found guilty we live in a different age in three years this country has changed remarkably with, with regard to these topics and good oh, I hope, I hope it has pleased. changed as much as you describe there have been events recently that, that, that made me worry maybe it hasn't gone as far as I thought it had then I'll leave you with this question Simon I'm a little late for the news what, what, what if, I mean, you've taught in a lot of schools over the years, you, you probably know I went to boarding school, at my prep school there was a paedophile who, who, who we all knew, we all knew he was active and it took, it was a, 30 years later that he actually got Me jailed too. and got caught. If the headmaster at that school had been told at the time that Mr. O'Brien, oddly enough that was his name, was abusing boys in the dark room, should, w w would it not have been an incredible dereliction of duty for the headmaster not to ask everybody in the school whether Mr. O'Brien had ever touched them? Well, of course, I mean... Well, there you uh, go, then his name's in the public arena, and no charges have been brought, no but, convictions been secured. But because you can prove that either way. Um, the boys can come forward and say, look, this happened in this particular uh, part of the school. But his name is in yeah. public. Every parent knows, every parent has had a conversation with their son that evening that says, he, the headmaster's done what? My God! Yeah, but it's, it's different than putting it out publicly. That and is public, you, you Simon. That is public. It, well, in a very limited way, James. No, 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 no. It's the size of the world that they live in. Because you were on the telly and the radio, the world you lived in was bigger. But it's still the same level of publicity. It's the size of the world you live in. Everybody I, 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 in that I, I, world I, knows. I take your point, and I think, quite honestly, most schools, and I went to boarding school in the 1970s, and if a teacher had been abusing children, which indeed a number did, yes. they were immediately out the door. Okay, what was wrong in those days is they went off, perhaps, to teach in another school. But if there was any suggestion of abuse of a child, when I was at school, and there were teachers, they were immediately sacked. Well, that, that's not that's not an answer to my question, my friend, with the greatest of respect, and I'm very glad you've rung in, but, but that's not an answer to my question. The question very simply was, if a teacher stands accused by two boys, should the headmaster ask every other boy in the school? And I'm afraid, I think, to extrapolate Cliff Richard's scenario from that works. If nine people have come forward saying they were accused by that person, 
then surely you ask as many people as you can that he might have come into contact with whether or not they have any stories to report as well. I, that's what I think, although I, for the record, if I'd been through what you went through, I'd find it very hard to sustain this side of the argument. It doesn't mean it's wrong, it just means that I would find it very hard to sustain. Take care, Simon. Where, uh, because another famous person has been investigated, apparently exhaustively, and found to have no case to answer after allegations of child sex abuse, is in the news, we find ourselves not for the first time wondering whether the law is an ass on this. As many people contend, Paul Cambaccini's book, one of my previous callers referred to, is, is absolutely, absolutely unforgiving in its fury at the way he was treated by the legal system and, and convert by the BBC as well, actually, although they've rehired him now. There are, I mean, a huge, huge number of issues at play, and I've tried, perhaps clumsily, but so far I think it's worked, to distill it down to a simple question. What, what is the lesser of two evils? A guilty person going free when publicizing his name might have, would have, could have brought more victims forward, or an innocent person suffering and then being exonerated. Um, Alistair used a great point, actually, which I think it's, it's I, 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 forgive me if I'm wrong, Alistair, but I think it, you're channeling someone else, aren't you? You say, it is better that ten guilty men go free than one innocent man be found guilty. Well, no one's innocent is being found guilty in this case. So although I understand the point that you're making and that the imputes, imputed guilt is real and the, and the whiff of guilt is real, uh, we're not talking about innocent people being found guilty. We're talking about innocent people being found innocent after being investigated and suspected of being guilty. I've got phone lines free now. 11.37 is the time. Hit the numbers now, you will get through. 0345 6060 973 is the number to call. I've got um, James McVeigh out of the Vamps joining me on air at about 12 o'clock, and I can tell you he's currently negotiating all the girls who've waited outside the studio for him. I've been doing this job for 12 years. He's making his second appearance on the station. I've never had to wade through crowds of adoring female fans in order to get into the building. Hmm. Uh, Matt's in Reading. Matt, what would you like to say yeah i um i'm unequivocal that i think unless there are exceptional circumstances which can be uh, determined by a an applied test of uh, of the current known situation by the by the investigating officers and a judge um that the name of the accused should not be released until the police can at least bring one charge so I understand what you're saying that, that, that you know, that you, in some ways you think that the name should come out prior to any charge. But if they can't make the initial allegation, even that one stick, then I think that is that 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 that, that doesn't. But, the, the law uh, doesn't work like that, does it? If you if you've brought one charge, the case proceeds. Can can you add to it during that process? Of course you can. You can be rearrested for any number of offences and, and face and, and and be put on trial at the same time for all of the subsequent crimes. Yes, or subsequently. But the point is... No, 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 no. Can you definitely be put on trial? <laughs> yes. If okay. they can bring... If, if, if more charges... If more allegations are made subsequent to charge, and there are cases... And then they'll just charge you. ...those instances as well, then they'll charge you, and the charges... And you will face those in court as well. But isn't isn't the point here simply that they didn't have to charge Cliff Richard? If, if, if they'd had to charge him in order to shake the tree, they would have done. Uh, not necessarily, because in order to bring the charge in the first place, they'd have to have credible evidence that the CPS is considered... They've got nine, they've got nine accusers. Uh, yes, and so what I was about to say was, is that in certain cases, um, that I, I, as I said, in order to actually bring the name forward before charge, there would have to be a test applied to the known information, and one of the things might be as part of that test is... Yeah, this doesn't work, though. There, this doesn't, this doesn't work, because the reason why charges aren't brought is because the CPS don't want, they don't want to pass it on to the CPS until they've done absolutely everything they can to ensure that the charges stick. They want to have the strongest available case. So you're, you're undermining one of the central tenets of British law by saying you, you, you just want to be as least weak as possible, not as strong as possible. And yeah. if I was the investigating officer, and you changed the law today, and I was receiving accusations on Wednesday, I'd charge him. I'd just change it. I'd charge. The only reason they don't get charged, Matt, is because they don't have to be charged. If they had to be charged in order to shake the tree, they'd be charged. Simple. But, they, but you can't charge somebody unless you have some evidence to charge them. I've got, I've got nine accusers. Charge somebody. Yes. So I've got one accuser. Say, That's all the evidence I need. What I was about to say was that if they introduced a new test that would be used by a judge to determine whether a person's name should go into the public domain, one of the things they might examine is, are there more than one accusation, independent accusation, 
currently outstanding or been made in the past about this. So the, li the likelihood of that increases exponentially if you put the name out there. So, so you're setting up a hurdle while at the same time backing an idea that that, that, that hurdle should be harder to get over. I put the name out there, I'll find you loads more accusers. Well, yeah, because, you know... And then I'll get over the test, but I can't get over the test because I'm not allowed to put the name of the accusers out there until, under the name of the accused out there until after I've done the... But they are evidence. But if if other people come forward, that's evidence of different crimes to the one that was initially brought to the police's attention. What well, I'm saying, which, which makes the charge sheet longer and the charges stronger. You want weak charges brought against people? No, it would yes. be weak. It would have to be a strong, testable charge. If they, no, I, I, well, we need a copper, don't oh. we, or a lawyer? Because I'm pretty sure if I had nine people lining up to tell me that, that, that they'd all been abused by the same person, if I wanted to shake the tree and couldn't shake the tree without charges, I'd just bring charges, and then Cliff Richards' plight would arguably have been even worse than it was already. How can you bring charges without uh, with with only he with only one person's word against another? Well, most court cases are that, Matt. Well, so they don't. So why do the police take computers and, and raid houses and search then? Because they want to collate and collect as much evidence as they possibly can before bringing charges. Because that's the way the law currently stands. You're the one that wants to change it so that it's easier to bring charges, and you bring it when the case is weak. What I'm saying is, if somebody goes into a police, what you're saying is, is when you talk about a new test, that's actually a trial. No, it's not. It's a, it's a, it's simply a question of should this person's name go in? Should we shake the tree or not yes. with this person? Of course we should, always. Uh, you think we should, what, before there's even any credible evidence whatsoever? Well, no, no one has said there isn't any credible evidence whatsoever. Nine accusers is credible evidence or credible grounds to pursue an investigation. If you're saying that you need to be charged before you can pursue an investigation to its uh, utmost conclusion or to its utmost level, then that's that's fine. But I, I, give me the headmaster analogy. Answer this. Two boys in a school, so they've both been abused by the rugby teacher. Should the headmaster ask the whole school if the rugby teacher's ever touched them inappropriately? Um, I would say that the, the headmaster should go to the police with the allegations that have been made at that point. Yeah, and then what? When, when do the boys get asked? When does the whole school get asked? When the police determine that that's the right time to do it. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'd, I'd want to know immediately. I'd want to know yesterday if someone in my school was accused of abusing children, or someone in my children's school was accused of abusing children, especially someone in a position of authority. I suspect you would as well. But um, 11.43 is the time. Josh is in Crawley. Josh, what do you reckon? Oh, James, you've touched on a really good subject here. Um, well, not a good subject, but a very I know what you mean. one. Thought-provoking. Um, I have a major event coming up in the next few weeks, and a very important person in that event uh, has met someone a few months back um, and was looking to bring him, uh, and he's recently now been um, questioned for possible historic um, sex offences against um, 10, and, uh, 10 or 11 year olds uh, of that age. And, and the name is in the public arena, is it? No, they're not, right. but this is why I'm saying that even though the name not being in the public arena, now I found out my initial response was he could be innocent, but my initial thing is now is I don't think I want him there and I don't think I want him near family of mine, families, children of mine, friends of mine, and am I doing exactly what the two of the lesser evils is? Am I saying he's guilty before he's innocent? Am so, I not, so here is a bloke being investigated. He's on bail, is he, or, or, or is he's, it not? Uh, yeah, he's, he's been bailed to... Yeah, he's been bailed to... Sort of so charges have been brought, have they? Um, I'm not quite sure yet. I, I, I know, I'm not my legal. I'm, we need a lawyer I, and a copy. I mean, I, mean I, I, I actually, um, I actually think that there, there's, he's been bailed because I think there's, there's going to be more investigations to be done. But you know, am I, am I jumping to conclusions thinking I don't want this person near any of my family, any of? Uh... It's so difficult, isn't it? Because I mean, Cliff Richard talks about losing friends, and and uh, other people talk about Simon War actually, who rang in earlier. Speech, spoke, I mean, he lost his job. In many ways, he lost his reputation. There were, they, 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 these were all, all, all unfounded allegations. He says, I, can't, I, can't, I don't want to go back to teaching. I was thinking of retiring anyway. So while he was on bail, while he was awaiting trial, if he'd been due to come to your party, would you have, would you have let go? Oh, I don't know. I haven't got a clue, mate. I know I sometimes give the impression of thinking I've got an answer for everything. Event, and, I, and it's one of these where I think, I've, even last night we were talking about it, and then my partner said, well, what if he's innocent, but what has he done to the, this other person for them to make up a completely... Well, that's the smoke without fire argument, isn't it? And then there's nine people. I went to a party hosted by a very good friend of mine, which I was astonished to see another guest at it who, had, who was famous and had recently come out of jail for 
crimes against young boys. Um, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. But but what do you do? Uh, it's and, 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 I, and I I'm I'm feeling bad about it. But at the same time, I you know I've only met this person once or twice. I don't even ever want to get to know him. Regardless, it's crazy. It's and that is why it's very important to remember that um, uh, uh, these are real lives that we're talking about, not just posters, names on posters and, and, and public figures. It's why I'm glad Simon was listening today, although very sad for him that he was in such a qualified position to comment. Josh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, uh, and that is the very def... Would you, I mean, because you said, well, no one ex I had no idea. No one ever suspected that he could... Someone you know. We should do a phone-in on that one day. What, what's it like to find out? Actually, someone you thought you knew is 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 guilty, has committed the kind of crimes that chill us all to our very core. Because I've got to tell you, the teacher I often refer to from my prep school was the coolest teacher in town. He was the teacher that we all looked. He was not the sort of sniveling weirdo at the back of the school hall. He was the cool one. He was the cool one that we all admired and looked up to and he chose the rugby team and he chose the football team and he selected the tennis team so we all wanted to be in his good books. And I suspect that that was a large part of his modus operandi. Uh, we'll do that another day, Josh, actually have conversations about what it's actually like to discover that the that the, the person you thought you knew is guilty of the worst kind of crimes. The time now is 11.47. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. And I can't get past the headmaster test at the moment. I really can't. I have in the past been persuaded that publicising the names of people merely accused of sex crimes is unfair. And then I've been persuaded largely by you and by the cases where we know convictions have been secured as a result of uh, shaking the tree, naming the suspect so that other accusers, other victims come forward. And I've changed my position back again but we haven't distilled it down to this before if you if two children in your child's school claim that they'd been abused by the PE teacher or the math teacher or the English teacher I don't want to pick on any particular <laughs> disciplines in this I think PE teachers have suffered enough but if two children in your school claimed or even one child claimed would you not want to ask your child and how are you going to ask your child unless you've been told about the accusation brought against the teacher Peter is in North Yorkshire Peter what made you pick up the phone uh, you asked for somebody who had some police experience to talk about the principle of not naming before charge. Yes, I do. And, uh, and purely on that procedural matter, uh, I'd, I'd say it is certainly not perfect, but it is something that has worked in, uh, worked four years and has been adopted four years and everybody respects it, but Yes. In in policing terms, the South Yorkshire case was a I, I sincerely hope was an outlier. But the um but the the position I would say is take the dreadful, dreadful events of last week. Within hours the media were reporting named locally as. Yes. And that is not at all unusual. And I think that some of the high profile celebrity cases over the last few years, the actual Names are in the media rather than coming from policing. I've, I've certainly, mm. in my past experience, had the situation we, we had arrested a police officer. I had somebody I knew very well, local editor of a paper, on the phone to me with all of the information at his fingertips, saying to me, would I confirm? And I said, I just simply can't. Not until the individual is charged. Now, the other interesting thing is the moment that uh, Thomas Mayer was charged... Well, 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 well I know you're a copper, I don't your need to... colleague, yeah. David Mellor, said quite properly, we can't talk about that anymore. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. And then I remembered yeah. I was de who I was dealing with and remembered that I probably didn't need to. But, but yes, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I know, well, David, I'm David's a get, Queen's I'm Council. if I gave you a cold feeling you, in the... You, you did give me a little wobble, I won't lie to you, Peter, but David, of course, is silk. He's a, he's a Queen's Council. I mean, if, if he doesn't know the way the law works, then we're all doomed. Absolutely. So, yeah. you, you, if I've understood so you correctly... In terms of the children test, which I thought actually had moved the debate on enormously... Yes. This is how I would handle that. Go on. I would take the opportunity of having a conversation without any names with my child. If I had heard that that had happened in a school, without naming names, without anything like that, you as a parent, and, and me as a parent, yes. you have that conversation with your child, 
very, very quietly and calmly looking in the eye. You don't have to mention anybody. If they're looking uncomfortable, all the non-verbal stuff That's interesting. will give you the impression you need to ask more. But you'd want to know, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. That's the point, surely. <laughs> you, 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 might, you might be able to... That's the unavoidable thing. Well, precisely. It, it, and and um, I, I think it is the situation. We have to go back to a principle. There are many principles of British justice that make me tear my hair out, large around the level and burden of proof and the adversarial nature of the, the court process. But equally, we have an underpinning prin principle, which is it is better that people who are guilty go free than the innocent and justifiably your phone's gone. Your phone's gone. I, 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 I heard the end of it. I, I, if I've understood correctly, unless Peter, we, unless we can just steer him back into zone again, I, it's sort of the least bad option. And and the, the media, as in the last hour when we were discussing why the referendum debate became so toxic, the media once again <laughs> shouldering shouldering a burden of responsibility. Eleven fifty five is the time. I, I I wonder if you can actually walk it in that way. Um, as someone else picks up on it here, but Peter's point. You could, the headmaster could ask the children if any teacher had behaved inappropriately towards them. Yeah, well then that would involve the police asking the general public if, if any pop star had behaved inappropriately. To, if I understood you correctly, Peter, I gather you're back. Uh, you're saying it's the least bad system, the one we've got, but it's far from perfect. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and you know, just investigating cases, you have circumstances where you, where you, you wish the rules weren't that way. But the other side of that is something that somebody once rather stupidly called noble cause corruption, where the, the end justifies the means. I would never want policing or the criminal justice system in, in general to be informed in that way. No. And no. neither would you. No, you're right, I wouldn't. Peter, thank you. I thought it was always good to hear from sort of inside these stories as opposed to those of us on the outside. And between you and, and Simon Waugh, the, the, the former teacher, of course, who ended up in court as a result of allegations that were thrown out by the jury within within moments. You, you, you do remember these are these are real lives that we're discussing. Abdul is in Houston. Abdul, what would you like to say? Um, I, don't know. I mean, I was just saying earlier that yeah, they they should be named and uh, and shamed. If they've not done anything wrong, then you know it doesn't matter. Well, I'm hang on, N it's named work. If you've not done anything wrong, you don't deserve to be shamed, do you? And I'm not sure you can name them no, without shaming yeah, then, them. Exactly. Then there's no shame in it. Oh, come off it. You're a paedophile. No, I'm not. All oh, right. I I've suppose that's one way of playing it. Pardon? I've been, I went to prison for a fight yeah. in which I was, I was attacked and I ended up defending myself to a point where the other person got really injured. Now, that's affected me. I was doing a law degree. You know, I was supposed to be on the other side of the law. Sure. But because the police weren't willing to hear because that person well, came hang on a minute, it's, it's, it's not rough justice, this. It's, it's, <laughs> we're not going back to that. What The point I'm making is that when I was in prison, there was one thing that one of the, the priests taught me. Uh, a lot of people complained that they couldn't, they were struggling and it was their first time in prison. Um, but he made a point that, no, it's the first time you got caught. It's not the first time you've done anything. I, I, I hear, I know, I hear you. I, I, I don't know that it, I think that is what is unique about the nature of child sex crimes is that you, you, you don't just shrug off the accusation and emerge with your reputation intact. You just don't. Um, you emerge with your reputation deeply and profoundly damaged in, in many ways forever. But, but I, I, I take your other points. I really do. Um, I've always thought, says Jen, in the last word on this subject, I think, Hi James, I've always thought that the alleged abuser should not be named, but your black and white question about the headmaster has changed my mind. I'm truly sorry to any adults who may be put in this position, but the system as it is gets the bad guys. And and that takes us back to Peter, the um, uh, man with police experience, we shall describe it as, in, in North Yorkshire, who, who said, yes, I mean, my headmaster example, very simply, if, if ch children in a school came forward and said that a teacher had been abusing them, wouldn't you want every child in the school to to know about it? And then the answer it has to be yes. But is there a way you could ask them without actually revealing the identity of the teacher? I don't think there is. And you broaden that out to a grander scale, you're effectively asking the whole country who may have come into contact with this or that famous person whether or not they have ever experienced anything similar to what the, um, 
what the latest accusers describe. I told you it wouldn't be simple, but if I reach for that headmaster analogy next time this story comes around, or rather if I don't reach for that headmaster analogy next time this story comes around, do me a favour and g g give me a quick reminder of how effective it proved this time.